Hi everyone, today I will be filming my first three book wrap up of 2023 and I can definitely say that the mood read thing that I started to do recently is paying off really well. I've had one five star already which was my first book of the year and then the other two that I'm going to be talking about are four star books so that's great. So the very first read of 2023 for me is As Good As Dead by Holly Jackson which is the third book in a trilogy by this author which is like a YA thriller pff, murder mystery type of thing maybe in a way. But this book is bigger than the other ones, it's 560-ish pages or so and I know that there's a massive division between people who absolutely hate the book and the people who absolutely love it, who think it's the best book in a trilogy. I'm one of those people. This is the book that I've given five stars to. I absolutely loved it. It's different in tone from all from the previous two, definitely. It's definitely darker and it's gone into a completely different direction but it's amazing. I obviously can't tell much about the plot of this book because that would be a spoiler but to give you an idea if you've never heard of these before so the first book was A Good Girl's Guide to Murder and we follow Pip who is a high school student and for her school project she is investigating a case of a murder and a suicide of five years old that happened in her town and the, in the previous two books there's a lot of mixed media, there's a lot of like interviews, different files, different emails and different bits and bobs so there's a lot of mixed media which I always like in books like this because it just adds an extra layer. There is some of this in this one but not as much as it was in the first two. What I can tell you about this one though, hopefully without any spoilers, is that in this book the main character herself is targeted so it's basically about her she's in a situation let's just say um so yeah whilst in previous two she was investigating different cases now it's her as the main thing the main plot that was going on so there's not too much of a investigation not too much of a mixed media in this one but there is still some of it and um wow. I knew who was behind the thing that's going on in this book. I definitely knew it. So to me it was really obvious. It, it did annoy me slightly at the time that the main character suspected everybody else but that person which to me was really really obvious. All the clues, all the little phrases that somebody threw at he every now and then, she didn't put them together which made me, I don't know, didn't quite believe that but whatever. <laughs> but there's a twist that happens about halfway through the book that I did not expect at all and after that the second half is completely completely different in tone and it was just amazing at some point it goes into a little bit too much detail in one way but at the same time it is important in there and every single detail of what's described is actually important and it's playing a massive role in the outcome of the story. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I honestly couldn't stop thinking about this book for a couple of weeks after I read it. And it's definitely going to make it to the list of my favourite books of this year. Definitely the strongest book in the trilogy. It's definitely one of the best conclusions to the trilogy I've ever read. Normally they go a bit downhill for me but this one was just a massive surprise and I absolutely loved it. Genuinely it blew my mind, it was so detailed and it was just so suspenseful, constantly suspenseful and I just bloody loved it. It was, it was great. My second book of the year was in a similar sort of genre and that is Close to Home by Cara Hunter which is the first book in a D.I. Adam Foley thriller series. D.I. Adam Foley in this one is investigating a case of a, uh, how old is she, eight-year-old Daisy May who is missing from her family party and of course they suspect the parents or somebody close in the family because that's how these things always go but they're trying to investigate who or the guests or parents or whoever is lying to them. This was interesting. I gave it four stars 
And I did mention a couple of videos before, The Whole Truth, which was the fifth book in this series, which was one of my favourite books of 2022, was amazing, absolutely fantastic. This one was similar, I, I gave it four stars, it didn't, it didn't quite get five stars, I think. But I don't know, I don't quite know why. I think there's some topics that are kind of discussed in the book and just some topics that made me slightly uncomfortable and it's just a personal preference so it's nothing really to do with the book it's just the fact that I don't like reading about those things it just made me uncomfortable and that's the only reason why it's a four star I think otherwise I might have given I might have given a five stars who knows maybe the next one in the series will be a five star book I don't know for sure but I'm gonna find out when I read it what I especially like about this book is that there's no chapters it's all separated into small sections which makes you want to just keep reading non-stop you want to just keep turning the pages and find out more and also normally in these books there's also like a different side story going on especially if there was in the fifth book not so much in this one but still there are some different characters that are involved we get different people's perspective we get the point of view of the parents we get the point of view of a couple of guests we get the point of view of D.I. Adam Foley himself and some other people in his team. So we get different pieces of information from everybody involved in there. Honestly, I did not guess what was happening. I thought I knew at one point, but no, this author is great at surprising you and throwing little twists every now and then that you just have no idea. She throws you off the, day, off the trail then you think you've got another one, but she throws you off again throws something else and then you start rethinking the whole situation and something completely different happens that just I think these books are unpredictable completely unpredictable I was very very hooked reading the book and I just I find them unputdownable almost and um, I read it quite quickly I would say for a book of this size which is what 400 pages yeah so I really really enjoyed it I would definitely recommend these I haven't heard many people talk about these at all in fact I've not heard anyone talk about it so I think they're really quite underrated so I'd highly recommend this one and then the last book that I'll be talking about is um, different in um, genre Vestigrim by Thomas Taylor so again because I'm doing mood read it can lead me anywhere absolutely anywhere so one weekend I just wanted for some reason I was in the mood for this specific book out of nowhere and this is the fourth book in a eerie on sea mystery series which is a middle grade not exactly fantasy but it's got fantasy elements in it i guess but it is set in a small town cheery on sea in the summer but it's called eerie on sea in the winter because the two letters are not lit up in the winter it's got some creepy elements in it sometimes that's why I think I like these books because, like I said before in my videos, I've sort of kind of lost interest in um, middle grade books. But this this series is an exception, especially if I'm in the mood for it. So I was in the mood for this specific book and it just worked perfectly great because I enjoyed it so much more than if I read it when I wasn't in the mood for it. I don't think I'd have enjoyed it as much because I think the previous two books from the series I only rated them three stars thinking they weren't as good. The first one was really good, but I think I just read them at the wrong time, not when I was in the mood for them. Learned my lesson, now that's exactly what I'm doing. So yes, I've given this one four stars. Of course I can't tell you too much, but what I can tell you is that we've got two main characters. We've got Herbert Lemon, who is a lost and founder at the hotel, which is in this town. And he also has a friend, Parma Violet who lost her parents and she's basically trying to find her parents and together they discover some there's obviously a plot in every book so there's a different thing going on in every single book so in this one is as you can see something to do with a massive robot i'll read you the blurb of this one because i don't think that's going to be a spoiler whatsoever a steam train wheezes along the cliff dog bearing a passenger with a murky past. A dismembered waxwork finger is discovered in the corridors of the Grand Nautilus Hotel. 
and a giant clockwork robot looms in a long forgotten basement. Herbie and Violet are sure that the new manager of Festigrim's eerie waxworks is up to no good and they fear that his schemes will threaten the very foundations of the town. But will anyone believe them? So I, like I said, really enjoyed it. It's always good fun to be reading these books. I'd say they're also really quite atmospheric in this small town on the sea. I find them really atmospheric and I love the friendship between the two main characters and we've got some villains in there as well and all the side characters are actually quite interesting too so I really enjoyed it, I had a really good time with this one and then I'll also briefly mention a reread that I did in January with my friend we're slowly getting through Harry Potter series so in January I also finished Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban of course I really enjoyed it, I always do. It's another five star, but I'm not going to be talking too much about it because I've literally reread them about ten times. But I just thought I'd mention that as well, that I've re finished this one too. So yeah, those are the three, four books that I wanted to talk to you about. Please let me know in the comments if you've read these and what you thought of them. Also, please let me know in the comments what was your favourite book in January. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you could like it, that would be great. Thank you for watching. Bye.